back to Luxembourg to see what the group's real activities are, the Vendel substance. This is Winvest's headquarters in a residential area of the capital. The ground floor of an apartment block. With a discreet camera, we engage a secretary in conversation as she arrives for work. Hello, are those the Winvest offices here? Can we see you? We're doing a little survey of companies in Luxembourg. How many employees are there here? It depends. It depends on the day? Yes, it depends on the day. And now you're alone? No, in theory, my colleague will be here too. I see, so two of you. Is there any way we might see one of the managers? Yes, uh, he should be here around 10.30. Okay. Is, is the manager from Luxembourg or from France? He's French. Okay, does the manager, the one we'll see later, the one from France, does he live in Luxembourg or he just visits? No, he just visits. So he makes round trips from Paris. Okay, thank you, madam. In the meantime, we take a look at the premises through the windows. At least a dozen offices, computers and telephones, but no employees in sight. Workstations that don't look as if they're used very often either. Or if they are, they're very tidy. But one resident is unhappy with the fact that there are curious strangers. Can I see your ID card? A real police check. And this is the context of the story you're making? Oh, this is a documentary. A documentary about Luxembourg, among other things. She hurries off to alert Winvest's secretary. But by playing the Guardian, the neighbor eventually starts chatting. Yeah, she told me she has all your contact details, so now it's up to the company. Oh, which company? Because there seems to be a lot here. No, no, Winvest is the company that manages all these companies up here, you see. It's a holding company. Like, there are a lot of holding companies in Luxembourg that manage many other companies. Winvest is a large mailbox with 30 companies hosted at the same address. There are holdings everywhere in Luxembourg, and we know why. It's not a secret. It's well known. You don't have to play the, the innocent with me, you know. You know what I mean. That's why you're here. And that's why you want to make a documentary to explain all this stuff, everything that happens. Okay, well, thank you very much. Goodbye. Insightful neighbor, that. We try our luck again at Winvest to see if the French manager has arrived. Oh, hello again. Have your colleagues arrived yet? Yes, uh, my colleagues have arrived, actually. I told my supervisor, and he told me that if you want more information, you should contact our communications team in Paris. Okay, uh, do you have a pen, please? These are the Winvest offices, but still no sign of the manager. And then a door opens. Hello, Edward Perrin. I'm a French journalist. Uh, we're making a documentary about Luxembourg. Uh, but I'm not able to talk. Uh, there is a communication service. But you are Vendel, right? I, I am with Vendel. And you are? I'm... So to talk to you, we need to contact Paris. Uh, through Paris, yes. OK, and for all these companies with a mailbox here, it's the same? Have to go through Paris? Yes. Do you have regular activities here in Luxembourg? <laughs> you can't talk, right? No. Uh, excuse me a moment. That's the number. OK, thanks very much. You're welcome. The door closes quickly behind us. The visit was a short one. To know what's happening in Luxembourg, you have to ask Paris. The joys of modern communications, no doubt. Hello, how are you? Well, we wanted to know how many people work in Luxembourg at the offices at uh, 115, 117 Avenue, Gaston Diedrich. The offices in Luxembourg have half a dozen employees, and there are 30 workers who regularly work with Vendel. So there are six permanent staff? They are employees, yes. It's just that there seem to be a lot of empty offices. Just, a, just an observation. What, in the context of the story? Yeah. 
Yes, but let me repeat it. Uh, we're just 70 with all our teams abroad. We can't be just five, can we? So there's only six employees at this address to manage about 30 companies. But no way to know if they're permanent. As for employees who come, especially from Vendel in Paris, it's impossible to know what they really do here. But the two people interviewed in the office this morning only stayed at work for less than two hours. Having regular employees come down from Paris would prevent Winvest being considered as a shell company. In a judgment against a former employee at Vendel in France, the employment courts considered that the employee was spending so little time there that, quote, there wasn't a strong enough link between the employment contract and Luxembourg. It continued that the work was carried out largely in France and that the former employee only had, quote, an office in Paris. And it's in Paris that Yann Philippin, a journalist with a liberation newspaper, has long investigated the activities of Baron Cellier. We show him the documents, hoping he can explain why Vendel is so keen on its Luxembourg subsidiaries. Well, this shows that uh, the taxable net margin is only 0.125%, which is an extremely low tax base. So it's with these figures that Luxembourg taxes this type of operation. Absolutely. We can see that Vendel lends money to one of the companies in which it holds shares, one of its subsidiaries, for simplicity. And in return, the subsidiary recycles the interest back to them and the revenues from the interest. And this is taxed at very low rates through its presence in Luxembourg. It's beautiful, isn't it? But that's not all. The Luxembourg tax office is very accommodating, and it's written in black and white in the company's public accounts. Uh, we can see quite clearly why it's very useful and very profitable to go through a Luxembourg company. Because as it says in the first sentence, and it's pretty funny, it says, quote, the company is fully subject to Luxembourg income tax. But that works out well because for such activities, the chapter states that the contribution, the liquidation of these assets is not taxable income in Luxembourg. And finally, the company is exempt from wealth tax. So there is no tax payable in Luxembourg, so no loss. It's as if the cash is circulating in a pipe and there's no hole in the pipe, so there's no tax. And Vendel, through Winvest, can distribute all of its capital gains to itself and to its management without having paid any withholding taxes at all in Luxembourg. The activities of Winvest, Vendel's subsidiary in Luxembourg, are practically non-taxable. Winvest, it seems, is primarily used to pay some of Vendel's managers, including Ernest Antoine Cellier. A very big piggy bank through which management can help itself to a lot of money. Practices that the French tax authorities do not like. Two Vendel managers have already been sorted out to the tune of nearly 250 million euros in total. In both cases, the tax schemes included at least one step in Luxembourg. Requests for interviews are sent to Vendel, but they don't want to talk, and all are turned down. The solution may be a direct approach to Cellier in person. Fouquet's, the stylish restaurant on the Champs-Élysées. The equally chic MBC Club, a circle of businessmen, are hosting Cellier for a signing session of his latest book, titled We're Not Here to Be Yelled At. Hello, could you sign uh, your book for us? Who are you? I'm Edward Perrin. I work for a new show called Cash and I would like you to dedicate your book, because I found it really interesting, and can you write it to Elise Lucet for the cash show, please? The former boss of the bosses seems to have trouble writing the word cash. There's no C, I can't remember, how do you write it? Is it S-H? S-H, so there's no C. That's right. For the cash show, cordially. And when asked about Winvest and Luxembourg, he says he's no longer in charge. I don't have much opportunity to dedicate books, you know. While we're interested in what you said in this book, we're also interested in your business, the Vendel Group, and a company called Winvest in Luxembourg. Can you tell us what Winvest is and what is its activity? Listen, I'm no longer in charge of the group's operations, 
Uh, so you would have to ask that question to the executive team. Because uh, you, 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 you don't know. No, I don't know. I left Vendel's executive board in 2005. I'm president of the supervisory board now, so please contact the executive board. But, Mr. Selly, are you still interested in the company's profit-sharing scheme? Well, what kind of behavior is this? Well, we have to ask out loud, because I went to Luxembourg several times and uh, I didn't get anywhere. Yeah, but listen, uh, you don't have the right to be here. So, we are here to be yelled at, I guess. Ah, the small Luxembourg subsidiaries of our big corporations. It's an embarrassing topic. Because of the Grand Duchy's bad reputation. An image the Luxembourg government would naturally like to erase. They've even produced a series of propaganda films to gun down the received ideas. It asks... Of course not. It's just a paradise for business, which offers custom-made services. It's a tiny country that's become a giant of the world economy. It's politically stable and, with its banking secrecy, a place to invest in safely and discreetly. And the icing on the cake is that Luxembourg is a founding member of the European Union. It also houses the Court of Justice and, therefore, a guarantee of probity. The way they tell it, it's a wonderland for investors. I don't know about you, but one might have a little trouble believing it all, taking into account the documents that we examined. One of the only people who can dispel our doubts is Luxembourg's Minister of Finance, and luckily he's in Paris, in the beautiful residence of the ambassador. We saw several of these documents, and every time in these schemes money passes through the Cayman Islands, Liechtenstein, Guernsey and Luxembourg. Collectively, then, the Cayman Islands, Liechtenstein, Guernsey and you are tax havens caught up in the middle of all these arrangements. We apply European law, and which is not the case of the other countries that you mentioned. We can be compared to countries like the Netherlands and the United Kingdom. Uh, which are eminently uh, more... So you completely refute the term tax haven? Oh, yes, indeed. It's an insult to my country, because Luxembourg applies all the conventions of the OECD. I work closely with other countries of the European Union, and you cannot claim that Luxembourg does not apply European law. No, but we, we saw them in these arrangements. You find yourself alongside them in these financial schemes. Once again, we saw them with our own eyes. You are among these countries. You say it would be an insult to my country to be qualified as a tax haven, but you're implicated in all these financial schemes. In your opinion, are the Cayman Islands and Liechtenstein tax havens? I don't know enough about the tax systems in these countries or regions to make a judgment. A kick into touch, as they say in sports. No, no, I just don't want to judge other countries so superficially. If a large French group, through a subsidiary located in Luxembourg, where it has no real activity, uh, pays less tax in France, what, what would happen? If it is contrary to European law, the French authorities must notify me, and I will ensure that this does not happen. Isn't it up to you to notify them? How would I know unless the French tell me there is a problem? You would have your doubts if a French company acted through a subsidiary, though. But you've never asked yourself uh, whether the inverse might be true? I think insofar as the laws are not the same in all countries, it's quite possible that through a subsidiary in another country, one could reduce the tax in the country of origin, which is not against the law. If there are abuses of the law, I will ensure that they stop, because I don't want to live to the detriment of other countries to which we owe so much, and with whom we cooperate in an excellent manner. 